Yeah, I'm now joined by Tony Gehring, a funeral director from John Ryan Funeral Directors and Christchurch. Now, Tony, welcome to the show. Great Thank to have you, you in studio. It's great. Last time I was at John Ryan Funerals, you were going through some renovations. A hundred years you've been in Christchurch. You must have seen a lot of change. We have seen a lot of change. I haven't been around for the whole hundred years, <laughs> I have to say. But uh, we've seen a lot of change in the last seven years as a result of the Christchurch earthquake. So we were unlucky enough to suffer an enormous amount of damage, mainly through ground movement and liquefaction. So uh, it's given us the opportunity to completely modernise and update our premises. And when I was there, I mean, it's a beautiful setting. I really got the sense of being calm, of being welcomed, of being warmed. Uh, you would have made, I guess, a few adjustments since the earthquake. It's given you that opportunity? We have. So people would notice uh, the most significant dif difference is the size of the chapel. So we haven't increased the footprint, but we've been able to increase the interior so that we seat more people undercover. Uh, we've also made a major renovation to our public areas such as our interview rooms and our viewing lounges that people will notice if they're coming to the premises. Now you've been there for a while Tony, so I guess when you had the chance to look at everything, what was the most special part of that facility for you? What's the bit where you go, I don't want to change this, we just need to rebuild it exactly the way it is? I think it's the feeling of, it's the ambience of the place, it's the gardens, it's the outlook from the chapel, the chapel garden, which oh, is yeah, just a beautiful. lovely space. It is, it, it is, is a beautiful yeah. outlook. Okay, good. Uh, special events planned, because I really liked actually having a look around. Are you going to do anything to celebrate the opening? We are. We're going to have a public open day on the 11th of August, 10 to 1pm. Uh, we'll have team members stationed around the place, so the whole building will be open. There's no nothing hidden, no secrets. Great opportunity for people to come along ask questions and have a poke around in places that they normally don't get to see. That's right, because usually if you're there it's under sort of extreme circumstances, isn't it? it? Is. So come yeah. in, prepare yourself, have a good look around and a good chance to ask questions. Really Absolutely, start the conversation. Yeah. in a non-pressured environment. That's right, and honestly these guys will certainly look after you and the team as well. Okay, let's talk about keeping someone's memory alive, Tony. What do you offer families that want to do that? Mike, there's any number of memorial options for families. Probably the most common for people these days are plaques, and they mm -hmm. can be either bronze or granite. They can be placed in a cemetery at our crematorium memorial gardens or in other places that are special to families. Traditional headstones are still available. Uh, there are some rules in modern cemeteries around the size and style of headstones, but many families still choose those. And I guess you've probably seen some unusual headstones, even sculptures for people. I have. If you walk around an old cemetery and you look at statues and angels and things like that, they don't happen anymore. But I've seen soccer balls, guitars, a bulldozer, fantastic <laughs> stuff. Right, so anything within limits is possible. Absolutely. Right, it's about keeping the memory alive. And look, people are moving to jewellery as well and other forms of memorials, aren't they? So they can keep them with them all the time. Like in front of us here, what have we got here? So that's a locket that is, uh, we are able to incorporate a very small amount of cremated remains in there and people can wear those and keep them as a, a keepsake memorial. So there's lockets, there's bracelets and beads. And I love this one here. So can you explain this one to me? What, how does this work? Well, it's just once again, it's a, it's a glass bead that has a small amount of the cremated remains or the ashes incorporated in it, designed to be worn on a bracelet or a chain. OK, so if somebody has had somebody cremated, say, 10 years ago and they've still got the ashes, can we do something with those ashes? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a very small amount, so we don't need a lot for the memorial or for the, for the locket or the bracelet, uh, but it's, it's always possible. And you can organise this for people, can't you? We can. We sell uh, all of these products through our funeral homes. Some of them, like the glass sphere, we send out. We get another provider to do that. But all we, once again, all we do is look at the um, the styles available, take a small amount of the ashes, and then produce the sphere. What do you like about people using the ashes to, you know, be closer to their loved ones like this? What is it that you like about that idea? I think it's a lasting and very personal memorial. And it's also one that's really discreet, so that anyone else looking at them wouldn't really know what was incorporated into the jewellery. And when you're travelling around the world, you can take them with you all the time, can't you? Can. You? <laughs> you can. I love it. Okay, so many options. So great that the um, renovations have finished as well. That open day is going to be fantastic. I do encourage you to get on down there 
and have a look because these guys are fantastic. Thank you so much for coming in, Tony. Cool. Absolute pleasure. If you want to find out more about the John Ryan Open Day or some of the different memorial options available, it's easy. You can give them a call on 03 379 9920 and someone will be pleased to talk to you. You can also visit their website, johnrind.co.nz or check them out on Facebook. Easy to find. Just search John Rind Funeral Directors.